So today I'm at University College London, UCL, to have a look at their immersive virtual reality lab, to have a look at how VR tech is developing, where it's going to go in the future, and apparently they've got some pretty cool robots as well. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. How are you doing? All right. Welcome to the VR lab. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to show you a few things around here today. You've already spotted a robot. Yeah. We've got some other bits and pieces of haptic equipment oh, that's, here. That's neat. Through here, we've got uh, the Whoa. the mainstay of this. So the immersive projection theatre, commonly known as a cave. So if I understand this rightly, these glasses are the type that send uh, a different image to each eye yep. and flip between the two very, very quickly yep. so that I can't actually perceive them changing, but each eye is getting a slightly different image, which gives me that stereoscopic view, view that allows me to give, you know, That's absolutely depth. correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch into stereo, okay. get the tracking working, and uh, then we'll be off. We have dived straight in here, haven't we? What it's doing is measuring how far the controllers behind you are from the, your head tracker. And the bigger that distance is, the faster you go. Uh, and the angle between it determines how you, how you move around. So David's just changed it to this room environment with a character. So, so this, this cave that you've developed, um, yeah. this absolutely fantastic immersive piece of virtual reality technology, you use for not just the funsies, mm -hmm. but you use for simulating environments mm -hmm. to, to, to cause people to have emotional reactions or to assess their emotional reactions, so, so for therapy. We've studied fear of heights, uh, where we had an environment where, you know, some buildings have external elevators. Yeah. So a very, very tall building um, with an external elevator. There were some people who would not go above the first floor. So you, you imagine the lip of the elevator was about here. Mm. They would be parked in that corner there, refusing to go any closer. Mm. But uh, and you can over, over the weeks, they would make progress. In fact, we did an environment here called the pit with a big hole in the floor a 30 foot drop down into another room oh, and I wow. would always experience vertigo. Really? Yeah, but you know, even before you would know this is a solid floor, there is no possibility of falling. You know there is no possibility of falling and yet you still experience vertigo. It's, 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 it's very, very odd. And do you find that by facing those, those fears or those mm -hmm. inbuilt biological fears of the height or whatever, mm -hmm. you really see development, you see improvement? Yeah. Well, certainly this is what the, the feedback we get from the, the psychologists. This is Jonathan's work, using a robot arm, a pair of stereo cameras, and an HTT Vive headset. Just face forward, gently. All right, stay still. George, I can see you. Oh, you so is that moving the robot as yes, well? It's moving the robot. Because my first thought when we, when we came in here was that, you know, virtual reality is what, what I've seen on these, these screens or over in that other, other room, the cave, but I didn't think that it would also involve I didn't immediately think it would involve robotics. If I could actually operate something remotely as well, then I'd be able to look at what I was operating and operate it there, wherever it was in the nuclear situation or a city or surgery or whatever. Yeah, so here we've just got the kind of smaller versions of uh, the robots here. But if I take you across to another building, we've got a much larger version of the same thing that does actually have a hand effector on it. So VJ, this is it, yeah. uh, snake arm robot, is that? That's right, that's right. This is a unique bit of kit. I've seen similar robots that will have a pincer operation or maybe some sort of bucket to pick up a sample, but of course, you know, there's a reason we've evolved yeah, these, right? <laughs> that's right. So the great thing about this hand is that it's the most flexible robot hand, I think, on the market. It, it can pick up tools, any sort of tool, and it can replicate how your hand works. Does it have a code name, a pet name, like Dave? Um, or sort of? We called it Professor Tickle. Professor Tickle? Yeah, that's right. Um, See, yeah. scientists are fun guys as well, you know. <laughs> Show me some of its um, some of its skills and functions. Hold this this ball. Yes. Something like this, make it a bit difficult. So the arm oh, so they... sort of snakes around you. Now I can't actually see it, which is even more unnerving. How are you operating it? Is that is that you, Ben? Yeah. Is that is that a PlayStation or an Xbox? Xbox, yeah. Xbox controller. <laughs> Eventually, all of this will be a, a, autonomous, and the, and the animal will, will be able to pick up things by itself. Oh, oh! 
<laughs> All right, you can have that. No snatching. How much feedback do you get back from the robot? Like Ben's operating it, and you can pick up a ball. But how, does, is there any way yet of knowing whether it has picked it up okay. or whether it's stable? We've got these really nice tactile sensors at the end, or haptic sensors, mm -hmm. uh, and this can detect touch. So when you make physical contact with a with this squidgy globe, uh, it, it can sense that and know how much pressure you can apply to it to actually pick it up in a, in a nice way without da damaging it or, really or damaging the, the robot. Now I'm going to do a whole separate chat about haptics okay. actually because there's a gentleman coming along who I believe is only going to be for about <laughs> half an hour uh, who's like the master of haptics who came up with the phrase haptics and so make sure you click on the link at the end to watch that one. So, so what's the future? For this, where do you kind of see it, <laughs> see it going? Well, um, obviously doing, uh, you know, in our homes, uh, doing our shopping for us. That's <laughs> do you really? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no. I just want to sit there and watch Netflix. <laughs> Other streaming services are available, exactly. uh, and while, while a robot does all the actual manual labour for exactly. me. Well, mega interesting. <laughs> Thanks so much for introducing me to. Professor Tickle. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you want to check out the haptics one, then click there and that will take you to, uh, to my interview with, with the master of haptics. Um, and let me know your thoughts about VR and kind of the future of robotic technology as well. Put them in the comments below. I'm getting out of here because he <laughs> appears to be bringing that arm back towards me again. You behave, Ben, and you behave, Tickle. Go on then, on the nose. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs>